Welcome everyone. Uh, thanks for coming to this webinar today. My name is Mike Barry. I am the communications manager for Millennium Memory Care. Uh, today we will be hearing from Millennium uh, Director Galina Markovic. Um, but before we start, just a few quick housekeeping rules. Uh, we will be taking questions at the end. So please enter your questions in the chat. The chat is if you hover over the bottom of your screen, you should see a little icon that says chat. So type your questions in there and then we will answer them uh, in the order that they were received uh, after a presentation which should take at most about 30 minutes or so. Um, so I'd like to introduce you to Galina Markovic, who is the Director of Millennium Memory Care. Um, Galina specializes in behavioral dementia, which is largely what we will, we will be talking about today. And uh, without any further ado, let's jump right into it. And I'll turn it over to Galina. Galina? All yours. Yes. Hello, everybody. Um, it's nice. Thank you so much for joining our seminar. Um, I am a uh, nurse practitioner. Um, also, I'm a pioneer in a behavioral dementia care called Millennium Memory Care, where we are a small home-like communities specializing um, all in memory care, um, bringing people to a um, beautiful communities where we um, take care of them in a very secured way, um, home-like environment. So it's a very different concept from a large institutionalized place because I thought it will be a huge big difference for a person with memory issues to be in a smaller, more home-like place than um, being in institutionalized setting. Um, so what is Alzheimer's and dementia? Um, this seminar is for caregivers, for somebody who takes care of people with Alzheimer's or dementia. Um, very frequently, people ask question, what is the difference between Alzheimer's and dementia? So if we look at a, I always compare this to a pizza pie. If we look at the pizza pie, the huge pizza, pie, the huge pizza is pie is dementia, but the piece, the largest piece of this pie called, dementia, uh, called Alzheimer's. So Alzheimer's is a disease and dementia is a loss of memory. Dementia um, is, um, is a loss of memory uh, can be caused by several factors. Um, it can be due to a head injury. It could be due to a um, vitamin deficiencies. Um, it can be from series of strokes. Uh, people may lose memory. It can be temporarily or it can be permanent. Um, Alzheimer's is a disease, is a cruel, cruel disease that is in a slow motion, destroys memory, affects brain, and changes individual completely from where the person was to where the person is. Um, there is no cure for Alzheimer's today. Um, there are a lot of research done. A lot of medications are um, researched. However, unfortunately, there is no cure for, for Alzheimer's, but there is a lot of hope and a lot of help and a lot of support for caregivers, a lot of um, um, literature, how to, what is the disease, how to take care of somebody with a loved one with Alzheimer's or dementia. Um, so Alzheimer's has three stages, early stage, middle stage, and um, so, um, and um, so, so it's early stage, middle stage, and the late stage. 
uh, each stage of that of the disease process involves different approach how to take care of the loved one with dementia or Alzheimer's. Um, early stage is very, very um, uh, unnoticeable. People may just become a little paranoid in the beginning. They can, um, they can forget where certain uh, objects belong. For example, putting micro in, uh, putting a remote control in a microwave, very bizarre behavior starts. Um, and the person may think, oh, I mixed up with something or I forgot something. So it's very unnoticeable to others, but the more frequently it starts to, to get, the more people become observant of those be bizarre behaviors. And, um, and um, um, the concern starts to rise. Um, usually in early stages, people can still write checks, they can still, uh, but forget how to do that. They can still um, cook, they can still probably um, drive car and then forget where they're going. Um, so they still very functional, we call it high functioning people with Alzheimer's. Um, and that stage can last either very like from weeks to months and actually to years. So when people ask how long the person will live from the start he was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, that's a very individualized question uh, because some people in different stages of the of the Alzheimer of the Alzheimer's disease, they, it, it can vary from weeks, months, and years. People with Alzheimer's today live more than 25 years. Um, we we actually have people in the in our in Millennium Memory Care, we have people in the 80s, for example, but the family said they were diagnosed when they were like 60s or you know even late 50s so so uh basically it's um it's a disease that can can be very very a long time uh the middle stage the middle uh, stage of uh dementia uh requires now more care it, it requires more family intervention now the person cannot take care of themselves now they need to to somebody to actually stay with them for safety for um they, they need people they, they need now toddler proof environment uh we can't leave any bleach we can unlocked we can leave any sharks unlocked so so we need more supervision we want to make sure that the person does not go outside so this is a middle um stage of this disease and and that's where uh, more concern, more family um, involved. Now the family thinks, oh, now we need aid or now we need a community at this point. Um, um, you know, we, we can't leave mom or dad or husband or wife alone. Uh, you know, so, so this is more and more um, care and involvement um, requires in the middle stage. Usually middle stage is the longest usually. Um, and that's very, very, um, I would say, for some caregivers, the middle stage can be very exhausting stage. That's where a lot of arguments may happen. That's may a lot of, um, um, you know, uh, some, some issues, behavioral issues. That's where most of the behaviorals come. And that's where we actually see at Millennium at that middle stage when the people come to Millennium. That's where the, 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 the caregiver will say, enough is enough. We, we're done. We, we, you know, we, we can't because uh, usually people get up at night. Uh, the day and night now very mixed up. They have a sundowning effect. Um, that's called sundowning, sundowning syndrome is when they mix um, the day and night, and after the sun goes down, they start acting out, and the hallucinations coming up. So it's a very different, um, very difficult behaviorals um, some people can exhibit during that middle stage. And the late stage is usually when um, the, pay, the, the person declines to the point that he needs 
um, he needs uh, complete care. So that means that the person is, and for some people late stage may look like they forget how to swallow, they, they need complete care, and maybe hospice may be involved at that point. Um, so the late stage, usually the shortest, the shortest, um, uh, and, and that's more um, that, that when people already pretty much uh, at the end of the digital stage. Um, so um, what is the, how we can manage, what is the most common challenging behaviors we, uh, we see? So as a director, um, where we're specializing just pretty much in behavioral, that's our specialty, what can be some common, common challenging behaviors that, that we can see with people with Alzheimer's and dementia? We see a lot of people can become very anxious, people can become very uh, combative, um, people can um, uh, be very, start to do very sudden movements that makes them prone to falls. They, um, they may scream, uh, they, may, um, they may actually hit people around them. So it's all very aggressive behaviors. And that's when families and even other facilities will say, oh, that's it, we can't manage. That's it, we're done, we, we can't, it's getting, it's getting out of the control. So what is the special ways how I, as a director, train my staff, my families, uh, the community uh, where we are, uh, practice, where our, be, where, where our communities are? Um, what do we recommend people to do? Communication is a key point, how we communicate with people who are aggressive, who are angry. Um, we have to not forget these people are still um, adults. And even though they exhibit behaviors looking like a childhood behaviors where they scream and acting out, they're still adults. We still have to talk to them more like we're talking to adults. Um, never scream at them, never um, order them to do things. Uh, for example, put this away go to your place, sit down. This is not how we talk to people um, with, um, with behaviorals. Um, people with, with behaviorals, they need your touch. They need more like, um, uh, more touch, more redirection. I'll give you an example. Um, for example, talking in a soft way, uh, touching somebody by the hand, um, not arguing with the person. If the person telling you today is the Wednesday and we're going to my friend's house, and even today is not Wednesday, you need to go as a caregiver to prevent the argument. We have to go with the flow. You agree with the person. There is no absolute point to argue or go in conflict with somebody who pretty much does not even remember where where and what day or what month it is. So so always the, the, the rule of thumb is always go with the flow. Um, muscle tension, when people are angry, they need somebody's touch. They need somebody to hug them. Even if they're angry, you, you don't grab them by the hand. You hug them by the shoulder, okay? This is how people get, uh, I can't even tell you how many times we got angry resident who will say and push away the staff and say, get out, I don't wanna see you. And the staff is trained, okay? The staff is trained to go behind the resident and hug him and just take him and say, let me give you some ice cream. Everybody likes ice cream. Ice cream is a great redirection technique. And, and, and this is how we train our staff to talk to the staff, to the, to the resident. Um, my staff knows that they cannot say the word no to the resident. It's the same like for the child. If you tell the child no, the child will scream even more. 
it's a, it's a very similar technique. Um, so if the resident is asking for something, we would be redirecting the resident. We will give him something that he likes. We know our residents very well. It's like, you know your family member very well. Uh, we only have 16 people in our community. So every resident has um, um, has um, plan of care and we know what every resident likes. Um, so screaming and acting out, it's very common. When the person starts screaming, the best redirection again is uh, redirecting the resident. Um, fall preventions, make sure the environment where your loved one is, is, is very fall protected. Uh, rugs, um, you have to absolutely have a some, um, uh, the sleepers have to be very fit. Uh, alarms, call alarms, you know, if, uh, we, we use at our community, if the residents start to get up, we have alarms that, that's ringing. So we know that the, the residence is getting up. Um, bedside mats, very important, but you got to be careful. It can be also uh, trips for the for tri uh, trip, um, fall hazard. Um, so, so be very careful if you're using the mats. If the resident is still walking and very ambulatory, I would not use the bedside mats by the bed. Heat protectors, very important. Uh, they Even if the resident falls, and he has a heat protector, uh, hips are a very uh, serious injury that the person can get from the falls. Um, head protectors, um, if somebody is on blood thinners, if somebody is on um, different medications, very important to have a head protectors. Um, now you can get them online and on Amazon uh, where they, they, if they fall and they have a head protector, they may, if, even if they fall, they will not have a very serious bleed, uh, brain bleed. Um, when is the most screaming and acting out happens? Usually during the care. Again, we're going to the childhood when people, when children don't like to get showers or for example, and they, and they, they don't want to get washing their hands or, yeah. So same thing, we're going back to, to, to our residents and um, people don't, they, they simply forget at this point, how to properly use bathroom, and they may uh, urinate, you know, in a in the common areas. So instead of screaming at them and say, "Oh, what did you do? How? What, what happened?" Again, calm redirection. Oh, John, this is the dirty bathroom. Let me show you the clean bathroom, and you take him to a right place. So the right redirection is very very important. Communication is extremely extremely important. Um, so how dementia residents perceive the environment? They're scared. They really are. Um, they can be in their own home and they may say, I want to go home. Uh, they paranoid. They think that people around them are not good people. They may scream at them. They may punch them. Uh, they're angry. They're confused. Uh, the rug by the by the bedside maybe look like a water to them, and they will, you know, they will afraid to get out from from the bed. Uh, we had a resident, and the, the the wife brought him a rug, and she said that's his favorite rug. And when he gets up, he likes to step on it. And then one day, we just noticed that he doesn't want to get up from the bed. He afraid. And then we noticed, we, we did not know what's going on. And then one of the aides said, Kalina, I think he, he's afraid of that rock. She said, when I was cleaning the rock, he was fine getting out from the bed. But when the rock is there, he, he, he just afraid. So those kind of behaviors, people have hallucinations, they're scared. That's, that's where the behavior is coming from. So to prevent the behaviorals, we just have to remove the stimulation for those behaviorals. Uh, they may look at the picture of their grandchildren and they may get afraid because the pictures now for them are not real and they, they may scare them too. It's a very different perception for the people with dementia Alzheimer's. Uh, we, we constantly see that 
people look at the pictures and it's real to them. They're afraid. They, they may punch the picture. Um, so so the, if you see any stimulation, remove it. Remove it. Um, key principles of caregiving for a loved one with behavioral dementia. Um, I know it can be frustrated and a lot of frustrations. I know it can be a lot of um, angry anger from, from caregiver, a lot of stress, but just one thing you need to remember. First of all, you always have to take care of yourself first. Don't overstress yourself. Um, there is respite programs uh, available for caregivers. You, you have to have a break if you're a main caregiver for somebody with Alzheimer's. Um, you still need to remember that your loved one, even he behaves like a child, he's not a child. Like I said before, he's the adult and he has to be treated as an adult. Um, show that person a lot of love. Show that person a lot of cuddling and care. If you have any soft, cuddling toys, believe it or not, they are excellent therapy, excellent therapy. At Millennium, we do use a lot of soft toys. And I can't even tell you uh, how, they, how they work. They work, amaz it's amazing how they work actually. Um, um, if you see a lot of behaviorals, it can be a reason for that. Like I said before, it can be simulation, it can be pictures, it can be uh, loud noise, it can be pain they're experiencing. Um, you know, if you see any of those, uh, it can be incontinence, maybe they're not comfortable, they're, they're, maybe there is some kind of discomfort. Uh, so you need to learn all of those things that make your loved one behaviorals. Um, we had, like I said, tons of examples when people come from psychiatric hospitals to Millennium and the family pretty much gave up on them, gave up completely. And they said, what should we do next? My mom was removed from one facility, from another facility, from another facility for the behavioral. She's punching everybody. And then we finally realized mom does not like certain colors. Like if somebody wears white, like a doctor, she doesn't like those. She doesn't, she hates to go to the doctors. So, so if somebody had a white jacket, she would punch those people because she thought it's a doctor or a nurse or, you know. So we find out this and after we found out and removed that simulation, this person was perfect. She was participating in activities and pet therapy, music therapy. She was a different person. She, she started to have a good time and she never punched anybody again. So very important to know what your loved one does not like and where is that simulation for that behavior. Um, avoid unwanted behaviors. So you are the caregiver. You control the environment you will know what to do and what not to do um, in certain situations. Um, we had a case when somebody brought, um, she brought her husband to Millennium for the, and he came actually from the hospital, from psychiatric hospital. The reason why is because she called on him cops because he grabbed the knife and he wanted to stab her at home. Um, and uh, she called 911, they took him. So it was very, very traumatic, very traumatic uh, experience for the wife. Um, but, but then she came for my support group. She brought the husband to Millennium and I did a support group and I, we, we discussed that. And I told her, I said, you know, instead of screaming and telling him, put, the, put this away, put this away, you're not allowed to have it and scream at him. The more you scream at the person with Alzheimer's and dementia, the more confused that person is going to be. Instead, you have to take it in control and control the situation. Uh, and again, the best is redirection. Okay, give me this and I'll give you this. Okay, come and help me to do this. Um, so so um, 
And she said, Galina, you know what? You're right. If I would offer him things that he likes, like give him the, the, the ice cream or go for a walk or, you know, or oh, let's go for a walk with a dog and this, he would, he would become down and, and he would not do that. But I started to scream and I start. So, and we'll learn that we're learning that more and more and more than the more screaming and the more anxiety and the more uh, aggression on your side, it's going to be working towards unwanted behaviors, what you're going to see in the person with um, Alzheimer's and dementia. Um, um, when people are having behaviorals, they point to a lot of things. The first one is, of course, injuries. If the person becomes aggressive or agitated, he may break the glass and injure himself. He may punch the door and injure himself. He may walk very fast and conjure. so you as a caregiver need to put the things in place um, and control the situation. Um, and the best one, like I said, is um, make sure the environment where the person lives is very childproof environment. That's what we do at our communities. It's childproof. All the sharps are locked. All the chemicals are locked. Um, we have um, all the corners are actually uh, padded in case, God forbid, somebody falls, you know, so they, they don't hit themselves on the corner. Uh, we don't have, we don't use any glass. Uh, we have a very nice uh, uh, plates, but then on glass, because you never know when a person can um, uh, throw the, 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 the dishes or, 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 or cup or anything like that. So we don't have any sharp objects. We don't give them knives. So this is how your uh, home have to be. Um, safeguarding your relationship with your loved one. Again, um, it, many things will change depending on, on who is suffering from dementia, Alzheimer's and you, in your home. Uh, many things will change. If it's your friend now um, has dementia and Alzheimer's, she may not remember you. Um, if, if it's your husband and wife, he may not even remember you. We had situation that the family will come and uh, with grandchildren, Mother's Day, a lot of flowers, cakes, cookies. And um, the minute the, the, the resident saw the family, she said, go away, I don't wanna see you. I don't even know who you are. Uh, and, and that was very painful for the family to hear that. And I see the daughter was very upset. And, and I told her, I said, listen, um, it's not your mom who is talking. It's a disease talking to, to you. Uh, your mom still loves you. And, and that's very important to understand. Even if, they loved, if, even if the person with Alzheimer's tells you, you're evil, I don't like you, and, and start cursing you and, and, and tell you different, different things, um, don't get... It's, it's, it is upsetting to hear, I, I agree with you, but, but uh, don't get it very personal on that level because uh, like I said, it's not the, 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 the person talking to you that you, you, you love and you used to love and you still love. Uh, it's, it's a disease that talking, very ugly, cruel, uh, very uh, bad disease that's talking to you. Um, instead, you have to show the love, caring and touch. Okay, um, and anything that you can bring to for that person, the favorite cookies, the favorite song, anything that you can bring to your loved one with Alzheimer's and dementia, even though they may not perceive and, and, and show you that they love it, that they know it, it's still good to bring some stuff that they love to do before, okay? Um, we, we very often, um, we are very often the option for people with um, different 
um, behavioral. So, like I said, we are a behavioral dementia place. People know us at Millennium as behavioral. There is a lot of, there's a lot of facilities exist today and it can be very overwhelming for the family when they are ready to, and this is the key when they are ready. Um, you need to start preparing if you have in mind that you ever want to put your loved one in a facility, you need to do your homework in advance. It's very, very important. Don't wait until it's crisis. Don't wait until um, you have no choices. Don't wait until there is a situation that you don't know what to do. You have to have an options. You have to have um, um, several options. Um, when you choose your facility, you, you need to um, you need to know that you need to do a very good research. What is the facility does? Talk to, um, um, uh, look at the Google reviews. Okay, that's very important. Um, does the facility offers respite care where you can come and bring your loved one for some time and, and see if it works for you and for your loved one? Um, Talk to existing customers, very important. Get some references. Um, uh, um, get, get the references. So, so um, I all people, so with Millennium Memory Care, people come to us for a reason because we are a behavioral place. Um, so we have, we, we do pretty much things that no one does in the areas where we where our communities are. And we are specializing, like I said, in behavioral, behavioral cases, behavioral dementia. But choosing today community is extremely, extremely important. You don't wanna move your loved ones several times. Uh, oh, I did not know that you don't have this. Oh, I don't know if you have this. Um, cost, typical cost of dementia care. Communities today, Besides that Alzheimer's is a cruel and very nasty disease, it's a very expensive disease. People call us and say, how much is, what is the cost to stay at your community? The cost today uh, for a dementia care uh, ranges from around 8,500 a month to 10,000 a month, depending if, if that person is in a place like ours. If the person is in a nursing home, um, then the, the cost is even higher. Um, but like, for example, um, and people usually say, if, is it covered by Medicaid? The dementia care is not covered by any insurances except um, in assisted in most of the assisted livings um, for the first couple of years. Some facilities will say a year, some will say two years. Then they may transition people to a Medicaid. It's a process. Not everybody's eligible for Medicaid. So you got to be extremely careful when you talk to the facilities and talk about Medicaid. Uh, Medicaid rules are very strict. You cannot have a um, certain amount of money in your bank to, um, to apply for Medicaid. So, so it's very, very a big process, long process. And you need to understand that many facilities, when you come and ask them, do you accept Medicaid? There is absolutely no guarantee in the world that the community can tell you, oh yes, you know what? After this, so your, your loved one is going to be here for the rest of his life um, after you run out of your funds on the Medicaid. You got to be very, very careful because not everybody, first of all, eligible for Medicaid. And second of all, 
Um, there is, there's could be a waiting time for the Medicaid beds. So it's a process. So you need to figure out what's the best way to do um, for your loved ones when you choose the community. Um, um, so that that's what it is. And at the end, I want to tell you also at the end of my lecture, then I will start taking some questions. Um, I want to tell you, you as a caregiver always have to know and take care of yourself. Um, a respite program is excellent for 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 caregivers. It, sometimes it can be sponsored by some some um, uh, grants. Uh, some communities may offer you some grants for the respite. Um, we offer at Millennium Respite two weeks to one month. Uh, so you can be on a respite program with us. Um, in the airplane, when there's, God forbid, an emergency, they always tell you, um, put the mask on yourself and then for the others, for the, for the person next to you. So that's what it is. You always have to take care of yourself as a caregiver because um, you need to be strong and healthy and have lots of energy to deal with this disease. Okay, great. Thank you, Galena. So um, we uh, will take questions. If you uh, want to ask a question, I ask that you please type it into the chat. At the bottom of your screen, you should see a little icon um, that says chat. That should open up a box on the right side of your screen and you could type your message in there. Okay, so uh, we will wait for a few minutes and see if anyone has any messages or any questions they'd like to put in. Any questions? People are always shy. <laughs> Um, just for your information, we have recorded this webinar and uh, we'll make it available to you within a few days. We'll, we'll send a link out to everyone who is uh, in, this, in this webinar so you can view it again. If uh, you have any questions that you want to ask after the fact, you can reach Galena directly on her email, galena at millenniummemorycare.com. Uh, there you go. Uh, slides will also be available. Yes, Joseph just asked the question, uh, will the slides be available? Yes, we'll put it all together in a package within a few days and send you all a link. Um, and that will also have contact information. So if you have any further questions, uh, as I think Galena mentioned, we do have five homes throughout New Jersey. Um, and we are building another one and you're welcome to come and set up a tour. And we're always happy to do that, providing COVID is behaving at the moment. So uh, please reach out to us about that. Any other questions? Uh, Stacy is asking, what's the best way to handle a dementia patient that gets aggressive without their person? Uh, if I'm understanding you, you're saying they're aggressive, but not their usual selves. I'm not quite sure what you're you're asking, but Galena, what you know, addressing aggress aggressive behavior itself. What what do you recommend? Um, well, aggressive behaviors can be um, if their spouse leaves. Oh, okay. Oh. Their spouse leaves them. Mm -hmm. uh, you see, if the aggression. So, so, so the, if if I understand correctly, the, the, she's asking if if the if the spouse leaving them and if they becoming aggressive. Um, to my knowledge, if somebody becomes aggressive, um, there is and the spouse leaving that person. Remember that person is has a disease, correct? So, 
if somebody left that person, there should be another person who is who needs to be a caregiver. Um, if their spouse does not want to, to do nothing with them in terms of caring for that person, um, I would just, just change the caregiver, okay? Um, just change the caregiver. Because when we had so many cases when spouses getting and especially if the, the husband was or, or the wife was very aggressive towards the spouse um and the, then the spouse said you know what I, want, I don't want to do nothing with that person anymore i'm afraid of him um there should be uh in plan that there's somebody else taking care of that person because remember that person has a condition that person has a disease uh, managing aggression for that person it's all very individual um of course, there should be some medications in place. The doctor has to be seen uh, if it affects the person's lifestyle. Um, but usually um, the, the separation is a good thing for somebody who makes, you know, if you're afraid of your spouse for the behaviorals and the aggression, uh, but there should be always somebody else who, who needs to be taking charge of that person. Um, you know, like I said, believe it or not, we had several cases that that was the case. And the wife said, I'm not coming next to him. I don't want to have nothing to do with him. I'm filing my divorce pay papers. Uh, but the question is, of, okay, that's that's okay. But who else is going to be now in charge of him? And, and, and that, that's a very difficult situation. Um, because remember, that person that left, has Alzheimer's and dementia, he needs he needs to be taken care of. We have a question from Sandra. Uh, do you have experience working with patients who you suspect suffer from CTE, concussion? And are there different strategies for working with them? Uh, I would not say different strategies. Uh, um, I would just say uh, it's very, uh, um, very similar. Um, usually it's, uh, you know, some concussions can cause a very severe dementia. Um, um, I would say this is the same technique. We do have people that will work with, um, uh, after concussions, after head injuries. Um, sometimes it's called frontal lobe dementia. Um, very often frontal lobe dementia due to concussions, to the head injuries. Um, and it's a very difficult type of dementia, but uh, we that's exactly what we do. We, we deal with those kind of behaviorals and frontal lobe dementias. Thank you, Sandra. Anyone else with any questions? Okay, last call. Uh, all right, it looks like we're good. So um, let me thank you all for doing this. We appreciate you being here. And um, as I said, we will be sending a link to the video out within uh, a few days. Today is Tuesday, probably by Thursday. And always feel free to get in touch with us if you have questions. Um, and thanks very much for being here and have a good day. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, thank Mike. You. Okay, thanks. goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.